Hello everyone and welcome to the Colibri module on uh, network security. This is the introductory part uh, and um, it's given by me, Jens Mio Pedersen. I'm associate professor at Aalborg University. The purpose of the introduction is to give you an overview of the whole field of network security, so I'll not go so much into details with the different parts. Uh, I will not tell you how to be a good hacker, but I will try to give you an overview of the field which will enable you to search for more knowledge um, when you want to, if you want to, and of course also to follow the, the basic module of the course. Um, the presentation is divided into three parts, and after each part there is a small quiz. The three parts are, uh, the first is this one, where we'll uh, give you some examples of type of cybercrime and tell a little bit about the motivations behind it. Uh, a second part which would deal with infections, or how to do infections and uh, how to make use of social engineering in order to do so. And the last part I will try to go through the different groups of attackers. As I said, this is not a uh, hacker course, but it's very good to know how hackers and attackers are behaving in order to be able to defeat them. Um, so in this presentation, basically I will be running through uh, uh, some different kinds of cyber crime. Uh, it's divided into seven topics that are listed here on the slide, uh, but in reality, of course, they are overlapping. So for example, uh, information theft often makes, you makes use of some of the malware that can be installed on computers. So it's not like seven completely different parts, uh, they are very much related. So when it comes to malware, Malware is really a contraction of the words malicious and software. So um, malware is malicious software. Um, there are different kinds of it. One kind is uh, ransomware. Uh, you might be familiar with it. But the idea is that somebody is taking um, control of your computer or some of your resources uh, and they will not let you access this, uh, these resources until you have paid some kind of uh, sum to them. Uh, that's what is called a ransom. So what can happen is, for example, that you can uh, get this information that your uh, computer has been uh, encrypted, all information on, the, on your hard disk is encrypted, and you will only get the key if you pay a certain amount. If you don't pay it, you lose the key and you lose all the data. Uh, this is uh, becoming more and more common, and you are seeing it not only in, in private people's computers, but also recently some Danish municipalities and some Danish public authorities were attacked by it. And of course, um, you can say that you should not pay, but if you don't pay, you risk losing your data. And even if you pay, uh, you might uh, lose your data as well. So this is a really nasty one. Then there is spyware, where programs will be spying on you and your behavior. So for example, they can be used for tracking your, uh, your behavior when you are shopping or when you are uh, browsing the web which can be used for providing um, ads uh, directed to you. It can also be uh, even more uh, dirty. So it can also be that they are stealing credit card information, stealing bank information, stealing personal information, which can be used to steal money from you or to provide even identity theft. Or it can be used to steal private information such as pictures and they might then uh, either publish these or they might that you pay some money in order not to have it published. So there are many var variants on, of how, how spyware can be used. Both spyware and, ran and uh, ransomware can be installed as what is called paper installed, meaning that uh, the criminals behind it, that could be a botmaster for example, who uh, get paid to make 500 installations of this kind of software. Information theft, as I said, is often done by installing uh, malware uh, that could, for example, be through a botnet on the target's computer and then get access to bank account or uh, personal information or uh, other things that could be interesting to steal. And in the past years, there have been some pretty nasty examples of it. I think the most famous one is that 50 million credit cards numbers were leaked from the American chain Home uh, Depot in 2014, so last year. Um, there is also a, a famous Danish example. It's, Danish, it's famous because it was in the media and it's about a, 
uh, Stefan from Denmark who is looking for a, a girlfriend on the internet. And Stefan is a 50 year old guy who is looking on, on the internet in order to find uh, a super hot girlfriend. He finds Russian Elena Petrova and they are mailing back and forth. It's getting really intimate. They really fall for each other and eventually it comes to a, to a time where she would like to visit him. But she doesn't have any money. So in order for her to be able to buy a flight ticket and, and whatever is needed, um, she needs a cash. The story is then that she doesn't need it from Stefan, what you could immediately think was the scam around it, but she has a rich uncle who can, uh, who can give her the money. The problem is that she doesn't have a bank account, so he cannot transfer the money directly to her. So what happens is that um, Elena's uncle transfers the money to Stefan. Stefan takes out the money from the bank and through Western Union, which is such a wire transfer service, he transfers the money to Elena. And by the step, the important step is, of course, that, um, that he, he takes uh, the money out in a way that is not traceable and then transfers it to her and the money are lost. And what happens really is that Stefan afterwards discovers that even though he was waiting for the, for the money to be on his account before he would transfer it, uh, the, those money were actually stolen money and they were stolen from another Danish uh, web bank account so he lost all the money. Um, I have taken the figure here even though I will also use it uh, actually later on but they show what Stefan uh, or Stefan's role in it was really to be what is called a mule because every time you make this kind of uh, um, of uh, cyber crime where you, for example, are transferring money from one bank account to another, you are stealing money from a bank account, uh, it's, it's traceable as long as it's uh, in the electronic form. So you need someone who will take out the money physically and go to Western Union or go to somewhere actually with the money in his hand uh, in, a, in, a, in an operation which cannot be traced back. So these are the mules and in this situation it definitely becomes a mule. Uh, another topic is industrial espionage and of course this can also be done in many different ways and actually uh, from what I hear you will see that many Danish companies traveling to, uh, to certain countries they don't know what is happening but they have this feeling that their information is lost uh, or distributed uh, somehow so they have uh, specific computers which contain no confidential information, no information about the company, no business critical information. And these are the computers that you actually use when you travel abroad. Um, but there can also be, uh, uh, be different kind of attacks. The one is that uh, you can hack into this kind of systems in order to gain information. You can have insider attacks where the person in the company who has access to the resources actually are, are just making use of the access that he has and then he share this information with outsiders. It can be through the installment of, of malware, through botnets or social engineering, where you get someone inside the company to install some piece of software. That could be that they receive an email or a message on Facebook uh, with uh, please see this video, but in order to see the video you need to install some kind of um, a program. And when you have installed this program, yeah, then you are vulnerable to, to the attack. Um, I think one of the most famous examples here are the Nokia example, where Nokia were actually uh, forced to pay several million euros uh, in order uh, in order not to have the, uh, some uh, vulnerabilities published. And this money was transferred in a in a parking lot close to the Nokia head office. Um, then we have the DDoS attacks, and the DDoS attacks is also something that has been very much in the media recently. And if you look at the slide here, if you look at the figure, you will see the whole idea about it is that you have an attacker. The attacker has, uh, through a number of handlers, has control over a number of zombies, and all these zombies are sending what can be legitimate or not legitimate requests to a victim that could, for example, be a web server. But because they're sending them all these requests at the same time, 
There is no way that you can respond to them. There's no way that the victim can sort out which are which are good or which are bad request. So eventually, um, you end up in a situation where even good requests are not responded to. And that is exactly what DDoS attacks is about, because it means that the victim cannot deliver the service that he was supposed to deliver. And um, often you see that uh, while the attacks are centrally coordinated, uh, they might not necessarily be so in real time. And of course, the distributed nature of it makes it also very hard to, uh, to distinguish between the good and the bad attacks, because the requests are coming from so many places at the same time. Um, you have also seen some pretty nasty examples of DDoS attacks recently. For example, uh, the attacks on Mastercard, attacks on Sony, attacks on Visa. So pretty much everything has been uh, DDoS attacks in the previous years. Another kind of crime is uh, click fraud. Um, what you really have to understand in order to see what click fraud is, is you have to understand that in the internet economy, a lot is about clicking. So when you advertise, if you advertise on Facebook, um, you pay either by the number of uh, times the ads are shown or by the number of times someone is clicking on the ad. And if you have a, 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 a website running, you might want to earn some money on having banner advertisements. And whenever people click on the banner, you will get some money. Of course, the idea behind the click for it is actually and that you cannot sit and click on your same banner and million timing and earn a lot of money on it. Uh, first of all, it would take a lot of time. Secondly, it would be easy to see that it all came from the same computer, so it probably wasn't genuine clicks. But what you can do with click fraud is that you can say, okay, I want to buy a million clicks. I want to buy them from computers all over the world, so it really looks like uh, human beings. And then if you go to a bot master who is controlling a number of computers, he can order these computers to, just as a human would do it, to click on the specific banner, and then it looks like there was a lot of clicks. And it is not only clicking on banners uh, in order to earn money. It could also be that you are trying to promote certain uh, search words in Google, and you will be able to see that, okay, because a lot of people are Googling for a certain phrase, and then they're clicking this specific link, you can uh, trigger uh, Google to think that, ah, okay, when people are searching for this, then this is a really good match, and then you advance in the, in the search hierarchy. Of course, Google is trying to avoid it, but the idea behind it is still the, the click fraud. Then you have spam, which doesn't meet, need much of an explanation, but um, spam can be sent from computers which are hijacked, so also here, botnet can play a role, because by taking over, a number of computers, you can use all these computers for sending spam instead of doing it from a, from a central server which will pr fairly pr quickly be shut down. So that was the end of the first topic here. So please finish this part by taking the questionnaire that is available in Moodle. Thank you very much for your attention.